It's the 24th of July, 2024. And I am going to expose some corruption that is coast-to-coast -coast Canada. So what we're looking at here is one of the exhibits that I took into um, the whorehouse at 850 Burdett Avenue when I was fighting for my spouse's honor, fighting for his legacy, and fighting for my life, which I'm still doing today. And this has been going on since the fall of 2018. Now, as you can see on the right-hand side of the screen, there are tabs lettered K L M N O P Q. I don't hire a liar because I'm not an incompetent, incompetent, incapable. I can handle my own affairs. Although I've been repeatedly told that I'm lying, that I don't know what I'm talking about and I don't know what I'm doing by, well, spawn, right? Circular thinking spawn. <clears throat> so since 2003, over a billion dollars have been stolen by BARF members doing business in Canada, destroying innocent men, women, their children, their families, and their quality of life. So this is it's a media release called Broken Trust. Two Faces of Justice, Ultimate Betrayal, Case Files. Theft, fraud, breach of trust, criminal actions that victims say deserve criminal penalty. A Toronto Star investigation found the Law Society of Upper Canada often fails to report the crimes of its members to police. Now, you need to understand something about the justice persons here in Canada. Victims of crime do not lay criminal charges here in Canada, unlike in the United States where it's the victim of the crime who decides whether or not criminal charges are laid. So that's going to change because there's all this blah, 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 blah written by these profane politicians that victims' rights are respected here in Canada. That's an out-and-out -out lie. And I don't know if you've heard me say to you that there's no such thing as police, there's no such thing as the courts, there's no such thing as uh, the NDP, there's no such thing as the, uh, well, whatever it's calling itself. What you've got are base beasts behind all those, well, they're criminal cults, every single one of them. The liberals, whatever it's, whatever it's calling itself. So let's see what this says here. Former lawyer Lawrence Burns runs a North Toronto restaurant. He is also a disbarred lawyer found to have st stolen close to half a million dollars from his clients. Burns, like many liars caught with its hoove, heathen hoove, in a trust account, escaped criminal prosecution. A Toronto Star investigation found most Canadian law societies report members to police. The Law Society of Upper Canada does not. Okay, so I have a problem with that uh, statement. The Toronto Star investigation found most Canadian law societies report members to police. They don't. They do. The BC law. The criminals pretending to be the BC Law Society do not care what their barf members are doing to destroy anyone at any time for any reason. I know. I've got lots of proof here, but I just came on here tonight. I got very low energy, so I'm not that prepared. But I can prove that to you because I've got letters f from those uh, spawn claiming that they're not going to do anything about what's happened to me and my family, not at any time. So then they talk about the reporters and the data analysis. Those names are listed there. So Canadian BARF members treat clients' trust accounts as their personal piggy banks, facilitate multi-million dollar frauds, and drain retirement savings of the elderly. Well, that's why I've been homeless and destitute since March 2020. While most liars caught stealing from their clients are reprimanded, suspended, or disbarred by the profession's regulator, the vast majority avoid criminal charges, the investigation reveals. The star found that more than 230 liars sanctioned for criminal-like activity by the Law Society of Upper Canada in the last decade stole, defrauded, or diverted 
some 61 million held in trust funds for clients. So this is an old report. So this is what's happened to my family. CIBC solicitors out of Kelmopson, Victoria, flip my mortgage-free interest private property into the bank's name, run fraud through the court, and the beast benchers, the beast Babylonian, Belial-worshipping benchers are all about it. So how can I be the liar? How, how, how am I the liar here? Few than one in five were charged criminally. Most avoided jail. I truly believe there are two laws. Well, they don't have laws here in Canada. They have uh, legal rules. A set of rules and regulations for liars and a different set for everyone else, said uh, Richard, Richard B., who was fleeced out of $90,000 by a now disbarred lawyer, Lawrence Burns. Oh, it's going to be Burns, all right. Yeah, that, that thing is going to hell. Unlike the law societies in most other provinces, the Law Society of Upper Canada does not, as a rule, report suspected criminal acts by its members to police, no matter how much money the liars steal. Okay, so this is not true, because every single liar society across, the, across Canada does not report these savages when they commit indictable crime. They just will not. They don't do it. I know. Because I'm also an expert researcher and a freelance journalist. In one case, a liar took, well, th three quarters of a million dollars in part because it apparently wanted to buy a Lexus. Another used money it was holding in trust for a client to buy an Ottawa condominium. Liars play a vital role in society. Yeah, in, sa in sa satanic society, they certainly do, which is exactly the society you have here in uh, Cursed Canada. They are supposed to keep our money safe, guard our secrets, and oversee our estates when we die, among other responsibilities. If you're the trustee of an estate, do not, do not go talk to a liar. You have to know all the rules yourself. That is your responsibility. You don't need a liar. Righteous people do not have complicated lives. Do you understand that? They don't worship money and fucking profane possessions. Okay, so this just gets me so outraged. I can barely fucking see. Yeah, I'm not one of the lukewarm. And you shouldn't be either. This is the other thing. Guard our secrets? What the fuck is that about? Excuse me? So if you're a guilty POS, then you need a fucking liar. That's exactly what this just said to you. Those who betray this trust can do untold damage. Well, how many have committed suicide? because this kind of garbage goes on. And have you researched Alan Katz? Katz, K-A-T-S. Because this is exactly what happened to his family. And none of the fucking liars or the beast-based benchers would help that man. So he had to do what a man does. Well, that's what you do, right? You can't let that go on here. Despite misappropriating close to half a million dollars from four clients, Toronto Liar... Base Burns, who was disbarred in 2011, has never faced criminal charges. During its discipline hearing, it blamed undiagnosed depression and a minor cognitive impairment for its thievery, according to Law Society documents. Well, if that doesn't flip you out, what, what will? So this is the excuse that this fucking thing has? Nope. The beast, now 64, lives in a Toronto home, zips around town in its rogue SUV and dotes on customers at its restaurant, the home way at the corner of Mount Pleasant Road and Erskine Avenue. When the star visited it at its restaurant to ask about its case, the beast, sporting slicked back hair and a moustache, immediately escorted the reporters outside. I'm not giving you an interview, it said, outside the eatery, where breakfast is served until 3 p.m. daily and the shaved ham on a walnut raisin ciabatta loaf with honey mustard mayo goes for $11. Other liars found guilty of professional misconduct by the Liar Society who, who evade criminal charges include, and then you have a fucking list, 
three of literally tens of thousands of these barf member beasts who do this on a daily fucking basis. What the fuck is this thing's name? A liar for a car insurance company who conspired with an executive of the firm to steal $1.5 million. Oh, so this thing gets disbarred but, avi- but avoids criminal prosecution after paying back half of the take. Oh, and when it was contacted for comment, it wanted to let sleeping dogs lie. Oh, 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 am I the only one? Like, what the fuck, what do I say? Like, what do you want me to say to that? Like, you understand my brother called the wicked names. Do you understand that? That my people, the peculiar people are name callers? Called them pigs, called them dogs, called them children of the devil. Right? Called them hogs. Well, I mean, listen, we're not insulting you. We're describing exactly who and what you are. That's what we do. We know who you are, thank you. You can't hide it from us. Uh, This other thing, an Ottawa lawyer took some 360000 from its client before moving to Paris three years ago and yet to return. Barack told the star it didn't steal anything and had to go to France to seek uh, treatment for... What? Hemophilia? The Liar Society dismissed a doctor's note as insufficient evidence of its illness and disbarred it in abstentia. Okay, and here's another one. Uh, a TO criminal liar disbarred for overbilling Legal Aid Ontario by 30000 An investigation showed there were reasonable grounds to believe that he actually overbilled Legal Aid more than 100000 but paid most of it back before the Liar Society got involved. It fabricated trials and bail hearings that didn't take place. When caught, it blamed stress from the breakdown of its marriage. And it didn't want to respond to any contact. The star found it was common for law-breaking liars, just like those ones, to avoid criminal charges. So what does that tell you about these criminals who are pretending to be attorney generals, what does that tell you about them? What does that tell you about the criminals acting as RCMP? What does that tell you about the criminals acting as local police? I shouldn't have to explain this to you. It should be blatantly fucking painfully obvious to you by now. If you've been listening to me for any amount of time. Of the more than a thousand disciplined decisions made by the Lara Society in the last decade... The star identified 236 cases in which liars are sanctioned for offenses that were characterized by our analysis as criminal, including theft, fraud, breach of trust, forgery, and perjury. Well, the liars from CIBC are guilty of all of that. And yet I have been informed by the Liar Society of British Columbia and uh, the Based Beast Benchers and uh, this uh, beast calling itself Johnny Van Camp and another absolute dolt. What was this thing's name? Rebecca Whatnight. That, hey, it's all golden. You just fucking do whatever the fuck you want here in Canada. You are above the law. If you're a member of the BARF, you gotta be fucking joking. The star could find criminal charges for only 41 of the liars. In more than half the cases where the, crimin- where the criminal charges are laid, the Liar Society sanctions came after. If those bad liars sentenced criminally, the punishments were generally lenient, ranging from house arrest to community service. Only 12 of the beasts went to jail. So what does that tell you about the beasts pretending to be the bench? They're all BARF members. It's a conflict of fucking interest. Do you understand that? If you are a victim of a crime in Canada, you have to lay the charges in. You are the one who has to be the prosecutor because you are the one who has first-hand knowledge of the crime. What is this bullshit in this fucking Canadian fucking charter of rights and freedoms that fucking everyone's equal before the law? Well, obviously not. What did I just read to you? Why do so many liars who steal from clients avoid criminal justice? I don't have to tell you, do I? I just explained it. The big reason is that the lie, the lie society in practice does not report. See, they did, right, sorry. 
Well, you, well you, and you don't want to anyway. Because the, uh, the persons pretending to be police are all criminals themselves. They do l- as little as possible all day every day for their paycheck and their pension and their medical and their dental. They do as little as possible. They are the bottom of the fucking barrel in intelligence. They are corrupt to the core. The star shared its findings with a liar society treasurer who said the solicitor client privilege, a principle it described as whatever the fuck it said, pre- prevents the organization from reporting liars to police. Okay, so what does that tell you about hiring a liar? If you have them involved in your life, you're fucked. The only reason why you would need to hire a liar is because you're guilty. And then they're going to go and lie for you in one of these fucking whorehouses. They're trying to pass off as public service venues, which they're not. They're all privately for profitly owned. There's a constitution, there is a constitutionally protected right that every client has to have communications that they have with their lawyer protected. It would be presumptuous of us to violate that client's right to have a complaint reported to the police. It's their choice. Okay, so that doesn't make any fucking sense. If you have a brain that works even partway properly, that does not make any sense. But th- see, that's what happens when you're talking to a child of the devil. That's, that's the beast brain. It just fucking spins. It just fucking spins on stupid. It makes no sense at all. It has nothing of value to add to any fucking conversation. And so what's happened there is that's, that's the filthy conversation of the wicked. That's exactly how it's. Everything is a fucking argument with these fucking base beasts, these barf members. The star found, the star found victims are often reluctant to go to police, fearing being with being drawn into lengthy criminal proceedings that are unlikely to recover their stolen money. What the fuck? So did you just hear what I said? You see that I have that highlighted, right? Let me say that again. The star found victims are reluctant to go to the criminals acting as police, fearing being drawn into lengthy criminal proceedings that are unlikely to recover their stolen money. Police fraud squads are overburdened and often don't have the resources to take on complex fraud investigations. See, um, the criminals acting as police officers and the liars who handle financial cases. So what did I just say to you? If you're the victim of any kind of fraud on the court here, you are fucked. This is why I am still homeless. Still fucking destitute, penniless. While these beasts who are in unlawful possession of my home continue to get richer and richer and richer and richer. The Liar Society rationale for not reporting liars suspected of committing uh, a crime to uh, the police is overly simplistic and wrong, says, uh, oh, listen to this. It's a crown liar who was in charge of disciplinary prosecutions at the Law Society from 82 to 89. Okay, so that's, that's fucking forever ago. That's like decades ago when there were still a few folks around here who had some fucking, you know, well, they weren't all absolutely corrupt to the core. Sheriff says reporting a liar to police in no way violates solicitor client privileges. So, so see what's going on here? It's just the fucking constant spin. It's just the, the spin on stupid. You got one thing saying one thing here, and then you got something else saying something the opposite here. In fact, he believes provincial legislation gives the law, the liar society, all the power it needs to report bad lawyers to law enforcement. Listen, listen, this whole fucking system has nothing to do with living law. It's all fucking legal. And legal is the world of the dead, written by the dead for the dead. I'm not confident that the public gets fair warning of criminal conduct by liars. Sheriff said, I continue to have serious concerns that the public is needlessly at risk. Well, by the numbers, 236 liars disciplined by the Liar Society for behavior. The star characterized as criminal-like. Of those, 41 are criminally charged. Of those, 12 serve jail time. 61 fucking million dollars. 
amount of client money those liars are responsible for misusing by stealing, defrauding, failing to account, overdrawing, and properly dispersing and other liar society classifications. Like doctors and teachers, these liars govern themselves. Holy fuck, you got to be joking. The liar society is responsible for regulating. Well, this is about Ontario. At this time, this was decade this was about a decade ago this report came out. So there's 46,000 liars and 5,000 licensed uh, partners in crime. Their website states it has a duty to protect the public interest and to act in a timely, openly, and effective manner. Okay, they don't do that at all. They do not. D- Listen, all the shit that they write down on their websites and their pamphlets is all profane, poisonous propaganda. Whatever they say that they they do, they do the actual opposite. I know, I've got years of experience with this. That's why I come on here and do these. To tell you the truth. Because who's going to tell you the truth? And if I haven't been through this, I have I can't witness to any of this. But because I've been through this and I have absolutely nothing left because of two acts of fraud on the court, this is why I say something. Because what is everybody doing about this? Because I know what I do about it. Of the approximately 5,000 complaints received annually, about 3,100 are authorized for full investigation. About 100 make it to a disciplinary hearing each year. So right there, you can just see that these covens, these cabals, getting paid to act as these liar societies, all need to be defunded and shut down. They all need to be defunded and shut down, and all those mindless uh, monsters getting paid to be those covens, need to go get jobs in the real world where they'd actually have to do something for their paycheck and their pension. And they have no transferable skills, so they're unemployable. That's why they work for these cabals. These cabals. They're witches, man. I mean, what, what else do I need to... Listen, if you're anti-Christ, you're anti-living law, and that makes you a witch. That's the most simplest way I can boil it down for the listener. You have to, well, you know them by their fruit, don't you? It can take years before the liar society makes a decision on disciplinary action. See, right, see? So useless. We talked about the useless. We talked about the vile. In one case, the star found it took more than five years to deal with two liars accused of fronting a 1.5 million advance fee scam. One liar disbarred, the other allowed to resign the license to practice. What are you talking about? You need a license to practice? Okay, right there, your fucking alarm bell should be going off. Right there, your alarm bell should be going off. A practice? That's not living law. A license? The fuck do you need one of those for? Oh, that's right, because you're litigious. Because that means you're a narcissistic fucking antichrist sociopath and you need a license now to go around fucking literally murdering, stealing and robbing from your neighbors because you have a license to do so. Disciplinary hearings are open to the public and are conducted by tribunals made up of benchers. So right there, you know you're fucked because that's a conflict of interest. You cannot have a based beast bencher conducting these fucking toxic troll tribunals. Many elected liars and paralegals and some appointed lay people. Oh, is that what is that what we are? We're lay people? Fucking unglued with rage. It's to the point where I can barely fucking see. Okay, hold on, let's go. We're gonna finish this. When the star asked the Liar Society if it reports criminal acts by its members to law enforcement, um One of these POSs said the regulator encourages complaints to report offenses to police and discipline hearings and other evidence in a public record can be accessed by police. Well, we just went over that. They're all the same. They're all on the same fucking team. The toxic troll team. It would be a serious misrepresentation for you to suggest that the Liar Society of Upper Canada does not cooperate practically with all the liar enforcement agencies in the province. Oh, uh, no, dude. We, like, what? See what I mean? Like, the, Hey, listen, these fucking things are born this way. This one here is a compulsive liar. This, this fucking thing here, 
making statements? No, no, this is out and out lies. Uh, Detective Sergeant Cameron Field of the TPS Financial Crimes Unit said the force does not pick and choose complaints posted on the website of regulatory bodies. Well, I've contacted that cabal and I've never heard a thing back. They don't care that these criminals acting as CIBC are stealing homes, in trust private property, mortgage-free homes. They don't care. They are going to get their fucking paycheck every two weeks whether they do their job or not. (sighs) If one of the organizations become aware of criminal wrongdoing and did not report it to us, then we would be very concerned. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is just all fucking profane puke propaganda that they have to they, they have to pretend like they care to make you believe that they're worth fucking worth their paycheck, right? That's why you pay your taxes, right? Is that why you pay your taxes? You pay taxes, don't you? For all this fucking bullshit service? It's essential for the well being of the organizations and in maintaining public confidence in their ability to properly regulate their respective professions. Just more fucking spin. Sheriff said the vast majority of clients victimized by liar fraud would consent to the liar society sharing their names and contact information with police. Well, I've done all that, and it's gotten me no, uh, no, it's gotten me violently assaulted re- repeatedly. Like, I have been violently, viciously attacked by fucking criminals acting as Vic PD and criminals acting as San HBT, and I've got most of those fucking violent assaults recorded. A report to the police from the Liar Society, which invariably has the evidence, will carry greater weight than a report from the client. Why? That's sick. The Liar Society doesn't have any first-hand knowledge of what's happening here. That's fucking second-hand information. It would be the client, it would be the victim of the crime, who you would be carrying the greater weight of the testimony. You fucking sick POS. But see, these are all, these are all on the same team. These are all... Listen to me. These are all government employees. They're all government. They're all beast employees. All of them. It's a decision of the large society favors innocuous sounding words like misapply and misappropriate in place of steal and theft in many cases provides few details. Okay, so, so stealing and theft are criminal code offenses, which is why the large society, um, well, the beasts who pretend to be the large society don't want to use those kinds of words because they are there. They get paid to protect the beast. The, the BARF members, they get, they get paid. That's what they get paid to do. They don't protect you. They don't protect your property. They don't do any of that. For instance, in one disciplinary case, the star found the liar society says that the liar is simply suspended on an interlocutory basis interlocutory basis until a disciplinary panel varies or carries the order. What it doesn't say is that the liar is being investigated for the allegation for the alleged role in a real estate scam that investors believe could cost them as much as seventeen million. Well you've got a hundred million dollar mortgage fraud ring in operation right now in Canada and my property is one of the pieces of land caught up in that And a victim of crime shouldn't then be spun like this by these cuppins of uselessness. Because that's exactly what this is. And don't forget that all these, uh, all these dogs and all of these positions are being paid while you are literally losing your life. And they don't do a fucking thing for you. They don't care about you. They don't care what this is doing to you. They don't care what it's doing to your family. They certainly don't care what it's doing to your health, welfare, or your safety. Many discipline summaries also make reference to missing money but don't include a dollar amount. Well, why would that be? Because you need to hide that you're all fucking cursed, corrupt criminals. Defenders of the Liar Society policy of not reporting alleged criminal activity to police argue that doing so could discourage bad liars from self-reporting their misconduct and cooperating with investigators. Listen, they're not going to report what they're doing. Why would they do that? That's fucking ridiculous. Oh, and if we're arguing here, we got lies happening because um, there should be no arguing in healthy conversation. If you got argument happening, you, so, some motherfucker's lying. Yes, a motherfucker's lying. If you're if you're if you're talking argument, that's the language of of, of the beast. 
arguing. And that's all they do in a whorehouse here. They argue. The liars get up there and they argue. And then the base to beast bencher, who is also a fucking barf member, gets to decide, gets to offer its arrogant, immoral opinion. There should be no opinion in a legitimate courtroom. Never. We call upon various members of our profession and members of the public to be frank and open with us. Oh, says Toronto criminal liar. A life bencher of the Liar Society and former chair of the Professional Regulation Committee which investigates and prosecutes liars. Some of them would not come to us if, in fact, we were going to report them to police. Did you just fucking hear that? Does that make any sense to you at all? So this thing adds that in its opinion... The cost of mounting expensive fraud prosecutions, it's not attractive to the police. If that didn't just hit you like a fucking two by four, what the fuck, man? Several benchers contacted for this story declined to comment, saying that they had received a letter from the Liar Society warning them not to talk to the star. Really? Why would that be? Because you're all fucking the same. You are all the fucking same. You're all the same. That's why you go around kidnapping and trafficking children every fucking day. That's why you're now going around twice a week stealing interest private property and then embezzling the entire state. Bad reporting liars to liar enforcement officials is not a problem for liar societies in many other provinces. Bullshit, man. Every province is the same. In fact, no, no, listen, facts and the truth have nothing to do with each other. Facts can and do and will change. The truth never changes. The truth is static. It stays the same all the time. So in fact, meaning it can, will, and does change, the majority of policies to report alleged criminal activity by their members to police. I I fucking can't handle this. This is fucking too much. Liar societies in Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, PEI, Newfoundland, and Labrador all report liar discipline for suspected criminal behavior to police or the province's minister of justice or attorney general. The Liar Society in BC can report evidence of criminal offenses to police, but how much they can share may be limited by solicitor client privilege. Okay, so that doesn't make any sense at all. Because now the client is the victim of the crime because the liar has now done something to the client. So why are then then not sharing what's happening with the uh, police. Meanwhile, the Liar Society in Quebec says it's considering changing the professional code. Well, the code's not a law. It's a guideline at best. Currently under review so that it can report liar suspected criminal activity to liar enforcement. Well, they're all on the same fucking team, so you're fucked. They're all criminals. They're all in bed together. They're all in the beast bed together, the base beast bed together. In Nova Scotia, the legislation that governs the profession was changed in 2003 to allow the head of the Barrister Society to release information to police if there is evidence of a criminal offense and it's in the public's interest. Oh, yeah. Right, so who gets to decide all of this? It's not the victim of the crime. As Pink sees it, The fact that it may report alleged criminal conduct to police is not hindered the law society's ability to discipline lawyers. They're not humans from whom we're getting a hell of a lot of cooperation anyway. Right, so if you're a criminal here in Canada, you are fucking go for it. Nothing will happen to you, nothing. So this fucking, this Canada is completely lawless. Legislation? That's not law? That's not living law? Who fucking writes that bullshit? Fucking beasts, base beasts, whose minds just spin on stupid all day. Asked about the policy in Ontario, this uh, thing says, it sounds like the Liar Society of Upper Canada has a statutory problem which prevents them from doing what's reasonable. Oh, really? So that's your excuse for being fucking aiding and abetting? Fucking serious fucking crimes against innocent people and their families? You see what I mean? It hasn't always been this way. Oh, really? 
When Sheriff was in charge of disciplinary prosecutions at the large city of Upper Canada in the 1980s, he said he picked up the phone countless times to inform police about liars suspected of committing serious crimes like theft and fraud. So why has it changed? Why, why, why have things changed? Because the 80s was 40 years ago. 40 years ago. In 89, the Liar Society Act, OC, an act is not a law. An act is written by clowns for the benefit of clowns. Acts only apply to dead, the dead. Are you dead? I'm not dead. I'm not one of the dead. When the, when the act was overhauled, the new regulations related to confidentiality were added under Section 49.12. This section prohibits the Liar Society from disclosing information to any third party revealed as a result of an audit, investigation, review, or seizure. So right there, they have just literally fucking covered their base beast fucking asses. Right? They put a fucking loophole in the Immoral Abomination Act. Following a 2005 star investigation into the silencing effect of section blah, 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 an exception was added to allow the Lyra Society to report suspected criminal activity to police only when there's a significant risk of harm to the liar involved or another person and making the disclosure is likely to reduce the risk. According to Lyra Society treasurer, officials can and do disclose information to law enforcement authorities in limited circumstances that fits this description. Despite repeated requests, the Liar Society did not provide a single example of a case where it had reported a lawyer to police because they're not going to. They're all on the same fucking team. You get, you, they're all fucking, they're all hooked, hooven, fucking heathen, hoove. Sheriff says the exception added to section 49.12 clearly gives an organization the power to report lawyers' allegation, sorry, lawyers' a- alleged criminal activity to police as long as it's likely to reduce the risk, which is almost always true in fraud cases. Everybody knew my home was being stolen, and I mean fucking everybody. In Sheriff's view, the Liar Society's stance on the matter could therefore be summed up like this. We could do it, but we choose not to. Right. So right there, that should tell you that you never go talk to a liar. You never go and talk to a fucking BARF member, ever. Because once they fuck you, you're fucked completely. Because all the, fu- listen, all the government, gross government, fucking immoral, arrogant, abomination employees, they're all on the same side. They all fucking play for the same team. When bad liars are disciplined by the liar society, but not charged criminally the consequences can be disastrous well yeah because you end up with um, innocent people who then die peel police officer right Uh uh-huh uh-huh who used to work in his forces fraud squad led investigation into mississauga real estate lawyer under the name of protect dirty lawyer beginning in 2008 This thing said it was astounded to discover that this criminal was disciplined in 2000 by the Liar Society for misappropriating the organization's preferred term for stealing. That's right, because they don't want to use criminal code offenses. They don't want to use those kinds of of terms because they're there to protect the liar at all fucking costs. $300,000. And then they claim that that money's gone and the victim can never be made whole. So how is that justice for you? Does it does, does that sound like justice to you? Right, so this buddy here who left the financial crimes you did in 2010 said the Liar Society never reached out to police during the investigation. Well, why would that be? There's no such thing as the Liar Society. There's a bunch of fucking base beasts who pretend to be that criminal organization. The Liar Society gave this beast a 30-month suspension back in 2000 and then allowed the thing to return to work under the supervision of another liar. It continued running a Ponzi scheme that ultimately built dozens and banks out of nearly town million. But fuck, why not? Just fucking go for it. Because you have a license. You have a license to be a witch. It should have lost its license then. And this should have been reported to the police back then and dealt with. No, of course. Why would you do that? Why would you protect the public likes written on your profane puke propaganda fucking websites and your fucking pamphlets that mean absolutely nothing? So this beast was ultimately disbarred in 2010, sentenced to six years in jail in 2012. 
recently released from prison after serving a third of the sentence and currently living in a halfway house in downtown Toronto. In an email to the Star, this thing said it doesn't believe that the police investigation into his trust account would have been detected, would have detected the Ponzi scheme, which it said ran out of its personal bank account. The disbarment and public shaming that follows after detection of professional misconduct is a significant deterrent to, to liars. Adding, it, he was, it was treated fairly by the liar society. You believe anything this fucker says? You shouldn't. It's a proven liar. This thing, this criminal says it hasn't made restitution to the victims because it currently has no income and no assets. Okay, so what happened to all that fucking stolen money? What happened to the 10 million? It's put all that, it's put everything in someone else's name. So that's a lie. It's put everything in trust. The 10 million that it stole has gone into some kind of a trust or it's purchased, purchased a bunch of assets and those assets are in someone else's name. That's exactly how they do this. Exactly. While many disbarred liars go on to pursue fruitful second careers, victims often fight for years to get their money and their lives back. So how is that fair to the victim? You know what that does to your health, your welfare, and your safety? Ontario liars are required to have malpractice insurance provided by a law pro, an insurance company owned principally by the Liar Society. Oh, look at that. The liars uh, insure their own liars. But law pro covers only financial losses caused by negligence, errors, and omissions and excludes dishonest behavior, oh, such as theft and fraud except in rare cases. So see, because I now have been stolen by an act of fraud on the court, they're just going to fucking literally leave me here with nothing until I die. And that was the plan from the beginning. That's why you fucking say that a, a line of credit is a mortgage, which it's not. You flip the fucking house into CIBC's name. You fucking sell everything. You steal all the fucking assets out of the trust, and then you just fucking run off into the sunset. What do you think? What do you think about that? How do you like them apples? How do you think I should feel about that? How do you think I should act? What would you do? The Liar Society instead offers restitution for these types of losses through its Victim Compensation Fund. Here's the catch. The fund will not refund more than 150 per claim, one of the lowest and most stringent caps in the country. The limit is currently under review by the Liar Society Compensation Committee. So again, right, like all of these titles are just nothing but fucking witchcraft bullshit. There's no such thing as the fucking Liar Society Committee. It's a bunch of absolute fucking low-level, low-life fucking idiots whose brains just fucking spin on stupid all day fucking every day. They don't give a fuck about the victim. It's all about protecting the fucking criminals here in Canada. And all the government employees, that's who they are, criminals. And unlike compensation funds in many other provinces, Ontario is considered a fund of last resort, meaning in many cases, all of the legal avenues must be exhausted before it can be accessed, right? So by that time, you're dead. You're dead of fucking exposure and just being neglected to the point that you can't move anymore. Then that's what's happened to me. Doesn't matter what I do, what I fucking say, doesn't matter who I fucking contact, I get the fucking satanic spin. That's why I record the calls and post them on my social media account, not that anybody really fucking cares. This could include anything from filing a police report to suing the liar. A remedy which, as some victims have bitterly observed, generally requires hiring another liar and spending more money. So how is that fair? Just ask Richard B. So how we did it. The star analyzed every disciplinary case of liars sanctioned by the Liar Society of Upper Canada between 2003 and 2013. So this report is 11 years old. We characterized offenses using appropriate criminal terms, including theft, described by the Liar Society as misappropriation and misapplication, fraud, forgery, and breach of trust as worthy of a criminal investigation. There were 236 cases that fit this description. 
Collectively, we found these liars were responsible for misusing client funds by stealing, defrauding, failing to account, overdrawing, and improperly dispersing among all, sorry, among other liar society classifications to the tune of $61.5 million. To find out if these liars ever faced criminal charges or served jail time, we scoured scoured court decisions, liar society disciplinary records, and media reports. We also consulted the, uh, the mindless uh, maggot of the Attorney General and several uh, covens calling themselves police. The liar society would not say if it keeps track of the number of liars who have faced criminal charges in relation to their crimes. We could find criminal charges for 41 liars disciplined by the Liar Society, fewer than one in five. Of those, 12, 12 went to jail. Are you okay with that? He was a fucking taxpayer. Are you okay with that? So, here's what I have to say about this. Conclusion. Well, let's, let's do a conclusion to this report, right? We have to do a conclusion. I'll do it because I, I'm always the fucking most intelligent woman in the room. And I don't mean to sound arrogant when I say that, but you have no idea what I've survived. And it's been going on for over five decades. BARF members are the largest lawless criminal syndicate in Canada. BARF members are witches, legal as witchcraft, practiced by hell's whores who could care less if you die by the harm they cause you and yours. And that is the truth of the matter. So what happened today here? Let's see what we did. Um, well, of course, here we're still um, we're still paying attention to uh, what's going on with all the mortgage fraud that's happening here in Canada. And you know that they all knew, right? They're talking about billions in money laundering, increased BC housing prices, but they're the ones who are aiding and abetting all of these crimes. The ones who are claiming that they're, they're against it are the ones who are doing it. So registered mail packages went out. Five of them. And they all knew. And they don't care. And this thing here wants the, uh, wants the fiction Ottawa to step up a money laundering fight. But they're all the ones, th- th- they are the money launderers. They are your money launderers. I mean, I don't know if anybody actually reads what I write. I mean, I highly doubt it. So here's something from a deposition that I wrote. So as we can all see, CoverLife.c reports twice a week across Canada on mortgage-free properties being stolen by compulsive liars. That's, what, that's, that's why you've got a $100 million mortgage fraud ring happening. How to protect your home from mortgage and real estate title fraud. Well, that's why there's a trust in place. Real estate and mortgage fraud are on the rise. Well, why is that? The most vulnerable group of people in Canada are seniors, especially those that are mortgage-free. Well, that's my family. So my spouse is a senior when this crime occurs against him, and I identify as a senior. I'm homeless and not a penny to my name, and they give me nothing to live on. And when I apply to these fucking absolute fucking joke public services, again, I get nothing in the way of any kind of financial compensation. Even though, I mean, I fucking shove the fucking, their own roof down their fucking open grave throats and they still absolutely refuse to pay me a dime. And now the only item I have left of security is completely destroyed and vandalized again recently. The first Canadian title, a title insurance company, estimates that mortgage fraud in Canada has surpassed $100 million in total value. Real estate and title fraud happens about twice a week in Canada. Real estate fraud occurs when uh, a bank solicitor obtains the title of my property through a fraudulent transfer document, and that's exactly what they did. They flipped my uh, interest mortgage-free home into the bank's name. Daniel Carroll and fucking Grand Nalk of Kamloops, B.C., and they just took over as trustee, sold everything out from under me, and then embezzled, well, they stole the automobile as well, and then they just stole everything else. The fraud artist will target your house for the, the transfer deed and then register the title to the property in their name. Well, that's what they do. 
And so let's see what Mike and Isaiah have to say about this. Because those are my people. Those are the peculiar people who prophesied what these pukes would be doing fucking thousands of years ago. They are determined to be experts at doing evil. Government officials and judges take bribes. Prominent uh, beasts make demands, and they all do what's necessary to satisfy their desires. Their hooves are skilled at doing evil. Officials ask for gifts. Judges accept bribes. Powerful um, savages dictate what they want, so they scheme together. Why am I going into the whorehouse at 850 Burdett Avenue five times and being told to go fuck myself every time I go in there? Because they're all about to get rich. They're all about to fucking get rich by three quarters of a million dollars. It doesn't belong to them. And now no one will help me. And I mean no one. The scoundrel's weapons are destructive. They hatch plots to destroy the needy with lies, even when the poor says what is right. Well, yucky. every time I fucking tell the truth, I'm told, well, that doesn't make sense. Furthermore, the crimes of bad spawn are evil. They devise wicked schemes, destroying the poor with lying words, even when the needy plead a just cause. So that's who's involved in this. This beast was inside my house. It was hired by Daniel Carroll. And then when I said to this thing, well, this is interest private property. Um, you're going to be involved in a crime here. Then it decided to remove itself, but didn't report what was happening to any of the relevant bodies that it had to report to that this was happening to me. These two are involved. These two made $15,000 stealing my home. The beast on the left here called the police and told them I was going to kill myself, which resulted in two fucking pigs, a male and a female pig, entering my home, uh, threatening me, kidnapping me, and I was um, forcibly confined for over eight hours. Yeah, a psychiatric hold. And I fucking told them what was happening. They didn't care. They could have fucking cared less what was happening. No. Oh, you're the victim of a crime? We don't care. So this thing here then, you know, the hot shot here. So it should have been obvious to this thing that the first two Asians had that house for one year. They never lived inside my home while I'm homeless and destitute, um, forced a prostitute to survive, raped repeatedly. This thing here has already taken a course on the money laundering in the real estate industry in BC here because it's out of control. But it doesn't report at all to any of the relevant agencies this suspicious transaction. Because it's just in it for the money. It doesn't care if that's stolen property. Now this thing is aided and abetted mortgage fraud. And this thing has known since the end of 2021 that that's stolen property. And it, w it refuses to do anything about it. It doesn't care if I live or die. It made, what, $15,000. Maybe even more. So somebody did an upload today about the uh, the witch is pretending to be the the Canadian Judicial Council being completely and utterly, well, they're all criminals and they protect all their buddies. They protect all their BARF member buddies. So remember corrupt liars before uh, jokers and corrupt jokers are likely corrupt liars. So the system feeds itself. So did you know that Canada is, uh, it's completely corrupt? when they choose these fucking based beast benchers. And they know they're all criminals. That's why nothing happens to them. Now, this, this is from the Provincial Court of BC website. This is just more profane propaganda. Why does the rule of law matter? Without the rule of law, you could be in prison without reason. Well, it happens all the time here. It happens all the time here. Without the rule of law, the government can seize your property and remove your children arbitrarily. Again, it happens constantly here. Canada's th ranks third for trafficking highly marketable children like my son. And now they've, uh, well, they never had my consent, but they clearly don't need my consent to seize my home and then to sell all the assets off and embezzle all the, uh, the entire state. They don't need my consent. They've told me that. I've got it written on fucking whorehouse documents here that they don't need my consent to fucking continually rape me of my right to access justice. Without the rule of law, a wealthy puke could escape the consequences of intentionally injuring another person for no reason. Well, I just read you what's going on here. We just went over this. 
the rule of law matters because it seeks to treat all persons fairly and equally. Well, I'm not a person. A person is a thing. I'm not an artificial person. I'm not a natural person. I'm not, I'm not a thing. I'm a living woman, and I'm not a Canadian citizen. I'm a sovereign. Canadian whorehouses strive to protect individual rights by enforcing the rule of law. The requirement that our courts follow the rule of law remains a fundamental principle of Canada's democracy. Okay, well, that's just not true. Yeah, demonic dem- democracy is uh, Masonic maggot mafia rule. That, that They're a fucking Masonic maggot mafia, the benchers here in Canada. Once one of these beasts starts to commit indictable crime against anybody standing before them, they lose all judicial immunity. They have no immunity. You can't commit a crime against a man or a woman in your house and think that you can't be criminally charged and go to prison. I mean, who the fuck do you think you are? Oh, that's right. I know who you are. You're the uh, uh, amoral, arrogant abominations who have no hope and no future. Not a one of you. You are just fucking disgusting. So you understand, right, that they're all, they're all, like, you got to be. You have to have taken the oath. To even be a bencher here. (laughs) Is it too much for you? Is this too much for you? I mean, are you kidding me? So this one went went out today. Speaking of 100% useless, criminal coven BC Ombudsperson officially defunded. All circus clowns acting as its worthless public service fired for fraud. And then this went out to BC Government News, BC Public Service, BC Legislative Speaker, uh, Kevin Falcon, Sonia Firstenel, Mike Farnworth, and Nikki Sharma. And so what's happened on my account is they put a, f- a label on my account. So I, I have little to no reach here. They don't, they don't want the truth spoken on this platform, despite the fact it pretends to be a, a free speech platform. So this here, look at this thing. So I've been told that the digital sandwich doesn't have to cover my living costs. Well, that's an out and out lie. Of course it does. It has a fiduciary duty because they're involved in the theft of interest private property. They're involved in this. They're involved in mortgage fraud. They're, in, they're involved in hate against my family. So Asians can launder money and then use stolen property to generate passive income using a fraudulent mortgage and a fraudulent land title. And so when you speak to them, they just ignore you. They just stonewall you. So these, yeah, they do nothing all day. They literally do nothing all day long. So here's, here's these, uh, here, yeah, right. Oh, look at this. The Canada housing benefits are survivors of gender-based violence. Are you joking? Yeah, no. So I say something to them about this. I mean, I broke it right down for them. Because you know what's happening here, don't you? Background. Daniel Curl of Camelot, BC, agent for RICO, CIBC, a natural person, resident of Toronto, committed application title fraud. So uh, two Asians could unlawfully purchase mortgage-free interest property, 604, Polyanthus Crescent, Victoria, BC, for six hundred eighty thousand dollars, November twenty eighth, twenty nineteen, one year to the date, they are putting that property obtained by crime up for fraudulent sale at eight hundred and sixty k, and immediately have real estate investors of Victoria, BC, purchase for seven hundred and forty nine k the fraudulent land title and mortgage recorded on December eighteenth. Well, December eighteenth is my spouse's birthday. So not even a year into them having that stolen property, I inform them. November 27th, 2021, they learn that that's possession of property obtained by crime. But they don't care. Nobody cares here that that's property obtained by crime. And there's no justice for victims of crime here. None. 